So I have an amazing process that I learned recently that I wanna share with you. And process really isn't the right word to describe it. Because if you're anything like me, you really don't want one more thing to add to your day. You know, so many of us, we have all these things that we feel like we need to do, like meditation, yoga, breath work, EFT, and all of these are amazing things, but sometimes it feels like we have so many things to do, and then as soon as life happens, all of them fall to the wayside. Or maybe you do have some, you know, a wonderful meditation or some sort of practice that you do in the morning, but then you still go about your day thinking your same crappy thoughts. And then it almost kind of feels like the meditation in the morning was all for nothing. And of course, none of it is, but sometimes that's what it feels like. And so this is different in that it's not another thing to add your day. It's something that you actually integrate into your daily routine. And for me, it's actually eliminated the need for a lot of those other processes and solves that other issue of the crappy thoughts interfering. And so what it is, I actually learned this. Um, shout out to Living in the End with Jay for teaching me this. But he calls it assigning good meaning to things, to everything at an in-depth level. And so um, I'd like to slightly rephrase that because I think words like good and positive, they tend to get misconstrued a lot. And so I, I like to use the word favorable, but it's the same thing basically. And so it's taking something, like I like to do, do this as I'm going on my walks because it's something I do anyway. So as I'm going through on my walks, I just notice like little things, like things that I would normally take for granted. And so I would say, oh, that's such an amazing tree. Life is just so beautiful and so amazing. Or that's such an amazing cloud formation in the sky. Just look at nature and all the glory and wonder of nature. And so I think it goes a lot deeper than positive thinking because what it's doing is it's reinforcing the idea that our perception is really at the center of everything. And, you know, so many of the great teachers, that's if you had to boil down their teachings to one concept, that's, that's what it really is, is that our perception influences everything. It influences how we experience the world. And so you could either be living heaven on earth or you could be living hell on earth, depending on what your perspective is. And so this exercise, what it does is it reminds you that you may not be able to control everything that literally happens to you in your daily reality and your daily 3D experience, but you can, you do have control out over how you perceive things and how over how you choose to perceive things. Choice, I think, is the key word here. And so I'll give you another example. And so as I'm going about these walks, I, I'll see all these beautiful houses. And so one, one perspective could be one of lack and limitation, right? Like, oh, look at all those rich people. <laughs> and I can, I'll, I'll never be able to afford a house like that. Like that could be one perspective, right? But instead, I I've been taking the perspective of, oh, um, look at all those amazing houses. And someday I'll live in a house like that also. And what's, what's more is that I'm taking this whole idea, a lot of us, you know, that are into manifestation or spirituality, we, we've learned this whole idea of the wish fulfilled. And so taking your future vision and or desire and imagining it as, as if it's already happening and really engaging with it with your senses. But for so many of us, this can be challenging to do, especially if it's something we've never actually experienced before. And so for me, looking at these houses and really just um, focusing on them really allows me to kind of tangibly experience um, what it would be like. And not, not from the viewpoint of, you know, putting it on a pedestal or anything like that, just more kind of like natural, normalizing it. You know, like I'll, I'll see, you know, activities in the houses like lights on or I'll hear conversations and I'll imagine myself, you know, living in that house and having people over and, and having those conversations. So it's all, it's kind of merging together the, the present with the wish fulfilled. 
and it, it um, fulfills another one of those objectives that we hear so much about in the spiritual community, which is being more present. And we hear it so often that I used to get very annoyed with it because it's really just kind of become such a cliche, even though it, it, it truly is wonderful advice. But this automatically kind of gets you to, by engaging with your surroundings, it gets you to be more present automatically. And it's very, on top of that, it's, it's just very, for me, it's a very fun exercise exercise and so it doesn't feel like a, a chore and so and at the same time it's you know it's kind of bringing it's again it's kind of taking your wish fulfilled it's taking the essence of that and merging it with your present situation and so as you're doing this the idea the whole idea is that you're saturating your mind with um with this new perspective of kind of seeing everything from a more empowering perspective. And we're doing what I like to call you're cultivating your inner kingdom. And you're saying, you're doing as Abraham Hicks likes to say, everything is always working out for me. So this is actually a way of literally embodying this in your daily experience. So it's more, it's more than just a nice idea, it's something that you're actually doing. Or in reality, transurfing, I see everything to my advantage. And so, so this kind of gets to my next point is that by doing this with the small things or the things where it's really easy to see how it's working in your favor, it kind of primes your mind or it's working that muscle so that you can more easily when something quote unquote bad or unfavorable happens to you, you can more easily kind of spin it around to see how it is working in your favor. And so I'll give you another example. So let's say that you have a recurring health issue and it's been going on for a really long time. And so every time the issue comes up again, instead of being like, oh no, here it is again, or I can't believe this, I, I really thought I was over it. Instead, you can be like, oh, this is my body asking for more attention. This is my body asking for more love. And now I have the opportunity to do that. Or I'm so grateful to live in a world where we have so many different medical options at our fingertips, whether it's the conventional medicine or alternative medicine, you know, supplements, energy medicine, it's just um, infinite, um, it seems like, the number of possibilities out there. And I'm so grateful to live in that kind of world. And um, so, as you can see, yeah, it's just really, um, there's no right or wrong way to do it, but it's, but the, the essence of it is taking something that could be seen as disadvantage, disadvantageous and making it and flipping it around. So you see how it's actually working in your favor, because as we all know, getting frustrated about something or getting angry about something, it, it doesn't help the situation. And then it just makes us feel like crap on top of it. And so you can also do it as just as you're going about your daily work day or your daily routine. And so I, what I do primarily is I, um, I do coaching and then I also do copywriting. And so when I work from home, I, I work all remotely. And so the other day I was just kind of really reflecting on wow, I am so lucky to be able to do this work remotely, to be able to work from anywhere I like. I'm not tied to a spe specific location. I don't have to sit in traffic every day to go to an office. I get to work you know, on my own space, my own time. And on top of that, my it feels funny calling them colleagues because or bosses because we're not in an office but essentially the people that i report to they're just so incredible to work with they're just so have such great attitudes and they don't try to micromanage me they just trust me to do a good job and it's just a very much a mutually beneficial relationship and i'm just so grateful for that and then taking this forward into the wish fulfilled it's like i see even more of this happening in my future just more of these expansive relation expansive mutually beneficial relationships where we're just healthy lifting each other up and so really just kind of like pumping it up basically is kind of how i um how i like to look at it and um so yeah so it's um what was my next point yes yeah, so a mantra i came up with a couple of months ago was i am enjoying the hell out of my life no matter what and I came up with that mantra because I was going through a time where I was very much kind of goal oriented. I was obsessive. I had one specific goal 
that I had around my business and you know, I felt like I couldn't even enjoy life until I had met this goal. And so I was just constantly in a state of frustration, lack, limitation. And I think it, I think it was kind of, you know, this programming that I received as a kid, you know, from my parents, oh, you have to, you know, eat your green beans before you can have your dessert. And so, um, and so it was that kind of like mentality, you know, sort of going into it. And certainly, you know, there's a place, I think, for discipline and hard work, but I was just really taking it to the extreme and just getting really obsessive about it. And, and it was just constantly kind of keeping me in the state of like yearning and longing and not enjoying or not appreciating what I had because I was just always looking um, to the future to fulfill me or satisfy me. And I wouldn't even, I would see something you know, outfit that I wanted on sale. And even though I technically could have afforded it, I would say no, not until I meet my goal. And so, so it just wasn't a good mentality to be in. And so when I came up with this mantra, it really just kind of re-shifted my perspective and got me to once again be just focused more on, on just enjoying everything now. And it's not all about these infinite goal posts. It's good to have goals and desires, but that's certainly not all life is about. I'm sure so many of us have experienced, even if we do reach those goals, usually it can be very anticlimactic if um, kind of if we're in that state where we're just, you know, pushing towards it. And, you know, the success, you know, it's, it's really, you know, as fulfilling or stimulating if we thought it was, that we thought it was going to be if we had just have all these, we built up all these expectations around it. And um, yeah, so that, that was a bit of a tangent, but I think it does tie in because that's what this practice is doing. It's really just relishing each moment and milking each moment for all it's worth. And it's showing gratitude, but not in the way I've, I've never really been into gratitude lists. Like I get the idea of it, but for me, it's another example of just all these processes, right? And just like one more thing to add to an infinite number of things. And pretty soon, you know, I was trying, I got to the point where I was trying to do it, but it just felt like a chore. And so this, you know, and it's so much more than just like a list, right? It's just this sense, overwhelming sense of gratitude that just infuses everything because that's what it'll be like after a well, while, the gratitude will just be on autopilot. And so it's not coming from the space of, oh, I'm, I need to be grateful or I need to be loving because that's what quote unquote enlightened people do, or that's what I need to do to get my desire, to get my dream relationship or the house or the car. Um, I have to be, you know, I have to be a, a grateful, loving person. So it's not coming from that mentality at all. It's just coming from, yeah, being grateful and being great, loving because that's your natural state of being. So with that, I really hope that you are enjoying the hell out of your life right now. And I really hope that you do try this process and please let me know how it goes. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.